welcome to Adventuring for Knowledge. This is Adventure Call number one. Guess what? This is Adventure Call number two. And what comes after two, Manny? Is it three? Yep, you got it. It's Adventure Call number three. Last, Last call. call. Welcome to our podcast. It's Adventure Time. And we're live. Live, ladies and gentlemen. So, Manny, who do we have here today with us? We have Mr. Kimia Hamidi. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. We're stoked. We're so (laughs) stoked. Fantastic. Kimia, we uh, saw a little background about Kimia, how we know Kimia. We went to high school together. Yes, we did. Oak Bay. Oak Bay. Yeah, we graduated in 2012, and since then I haven't really touched base with you. Do you know what? I actually know Kimia longer than, than high school. That's true. Kimia and I met at little league baseball at oh, beacon, yeah. beacon hill little league that's so we right. must have been like 10 no no because i no there's a no little way, bit because older. i lived in I, I was in california so when did you move until here? i was, was like 13 14. okay so it was so thir- it was probably it was when i was 13. right when you moved here yeah right yeah yeah because i Our, played baseball in the states yeah and then i came up here. i re- i remember yeah. i remember you were on i think we had we were on the same team for a bit that's right because I remember I was a pinch runner for a while. Right, with your yeah. bright orange Nike boots. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Playing yeah, baseball. That's way back. That's that way was, back. Was Drake on our team? Yep. And he was hitting home runs because he was just way bigger than everyone. Yep. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, that was good times. That was good times. <laughs> I don't. I don't know baseball. I don't know anything about baseball. No, it's a slow. I've game. never played it's it. A, it's, it's a very slow it's game. Boring. Never it's game. Boring. <laughs> it's pretty boring. It's pretty boring. There was this time where Thomas and I we went to go see a Blue Jays game. Mm-hmm. Thomas from high school, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, we went to go see. A, I like how you just say, "Yeah, Thomas from high school." You don't have to use any last names. We just sure. Yeah. Them. Well, was there a second Thomas in our class? I don't think so. No. No. Um, no, we went. Who's the Seattle team? The Mariners. Mariners. We went to go see a Mariners game. Yeah. And we watched three innings. And there was a Billy Talent concert a few blocks away. And we were like, fuck, this is so boring. And then we bought tickets off some scalper and just went to the concert <laughs> instead. Baseball, everybody. Well, as you can tell, Mr. Kimi is very into sports. So this is how we met in high school, Kimi and I. And you, well, you too, yeah. playing sports as well. I, well, we became better friends when we were in high school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So tell us what what do you like doing on your free time? Oh, that's interesting. That's a good question. Um, when I have free time, uh, I've been playing a little bit of StarCraft, which I've which I've been enjoying. It's one of the only uh, strategy games, strategy video games that I don't actually feel bad about playing, um, <laughs> because it, it it teaches you so much about real time strategy, and I think it's it's a really interesting mental exercise uh, no. when I actually have the time to play um, and if you watch if you watch pro Starcraft it's unbelievable it's ridiculous how people can navigate oh, it's crazy I'm not even I'm not that familiar with the game okay so it's, it's like a, a strategic do you under, Do you know what Starcraft is I, I know the name and sure. I might have seen it a few times okay. but I'm not familiar so, whatsoever I'm not a video game yeah guy. so the, it's, it's real time strategy so the, okay. the objective is you are one of three races Protoss, Terran or Zerg mm-hmm. and you have to build an economy and also build an army and your goal is to either get them to leave the game by beating all their army or destroy all their buildings so that obviously they can't play anymore and the decision tree in starcraft is so intense because there's so many different things that you can do like like much like chess right where if they do x you have a variety of moves but in starcraft it's all real time so if they send units to your base you have to defend while also building up your economy so you have to build workers to mine minerals it's it's wild yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of really high level people kind of in business um, who plays StarCraft? Just Toby, because it's so strategic. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know Toby, the guy who started Toby Lutka, who started uh, Shopify? No. Yeah. So he's no. he tweets about him playing StarCraft. So he plays a lot of StarCraft, which that is, is funny. So interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. I'm not into gaming because Hope and I. Well, we're trying to be minimalist. Sure. Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to buy a console. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of people playing StarCraft, and I didn't yeah. know it was that tactical. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't play like, you know, I'll maybe play a couple hours on the yeah, weekend. Yeah, there, but it's, exactly. it's but a it's, nice mind exercise. It's fun, exactly. Um, I'm really into poker, so I play a lot of poker. I remember um, that, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he invited us to go play poker with Yeah, him. I host yeah, house definitely. games sometimes when I don't go play in the casino, so if you guys want to come. Yeah. It's a... <clears throat> he's basically 
Come on, just come, like, <laughs> no, come no, bring no, your money. No, uh, yeah. no way. <laughs> poker shark um, over it's here. All, <laughs> poker is also, if you want to learn about human behavior under oh, yeah. limited information, yep. uh, I guess, restraints, poker is a very, very interesting way to develop. And there's, again, a lot of really high-level people in business who play poker. Just inte- intelligent people in general. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just it's just such an interesting strategic game. Yeah. And money's on the line, so obviously it's a big motivator, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's always fun. Um, you know, like you mentioned, I play a lot of sports, yeah. so I'm playing soccer in my spare time. Um, and then I just read. I read a lot of books. Yeah. And so listen to podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, another question, knowledge. would you rather read yeah. or listen to an audio? Oh, interesting. Yeah, you so, asked, we, we had that conversation at Oak Bay Rex. That's right. And That's you right. asked me that same question. Yes. I'd yeah. Reciprocate um, I try and do both. Nice. I, I feel like I can retain a book, like a, uh, like a written book better. Um, I agree. but if I'm on the go, I will, I will listen to audiobooks. And I, what I'll do is like, if I'm traveling, I'll listen to my audiobook. but if I actually have time, I'll read it and I'll double up. So, if, you know, like right now, what am I listening to? I'm listening to, um, everybody lies, uh, mm-hmm. in data mm-hmm. and statistics. Um, mm-hmm. I don't actually remember the title. You can, you, I'll look it up for you. Um, and then I'm also reading the box, how the shipping container changed the world economy crazy it did, it did to be honest. it's amazing i read it i've read an article yeah. about it yeah so good you should read the book it's yeah. even better because it just it just goes in depth and it's interesting it is a phenomenal story about this one guy yeah. who basically looks at the world and you know boxes have been tried in shipping before but it was all this loose freight and so yeah. what he figures out is the it takes too long like the ports are the problem it takes too long for them to load up all this loose freight onto the ship and so he's like well, if there was a standardized box where I could just drive my truck up, take the box off, put it on the ship and sail away, that would be great. And so he basically risks his entire fortune, which is corporate suicide because he has this massive trucking company. Um, he risks his entire fortune building this one ship called the Ideal X. And the Ideal X is his first like custom built shipping container ship. And so it goes from uh, the port of Newark down to Houston and then he gets on a plane and he races it down and when he lands there, he does quick math on the dock when it kind of finds its way into Houston and he realizes he's taken freight costs from around $5 per ton to 15 cents per ton and he's just like, I've changed the world. No this way. is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Yeah, and so it, it just starts this like, crazy revolution. Like if you think of China, like they wouldn't be where they are today without global trade. Right? Because it was right. just it was such a hassle to get stuff from one side of the world to the other. So it, it's a phenomenal book. Like I would highly recommend it. So as you can see, Mr. Kimi is in business and entrepreneurship, and this is what he's interested in. Yes. These decisions and risk from that people take is what he's interested in. Well, I feel like you are. Is, am I correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's I think it's phenomenal. And I also listen to a lot of entrepreneurship yeah. podcasts yeah, exactly. just to kind of learn about Right, How other make, people think through things. Yeah. Right. That makes sense because everything that you've said right now, you've connected to business. You're like, oh, yes. talking about poker. Oh, yeah, the, the business guys do exactly. it because of this. So yeah. they were talking about StarCraft. Oh, because business yep. guys do this. Yep. Your mind yeah. is actively thinking about <laughs> businesses and making those connections with many different things. Yeah. Yeah. Continuously. And I that's Well, yeah. Right? I think, you know, you might give me a little bit more credit than I'm due because I also just really enjoy doing those things. Right. But, but yeah, but no, you still do. But them. yeah, I, I still do it either consciously right? it's not or like subconsciously. You're not, right. Yes, yeah, I'm it's always. Not like you're not I'm not trying to waste time, and when I no. do try and do things for fun, mm-hmm. I kind of think, you know, how can this, how can this benefit me, in the long term? Because yeah. long term, what's there's this really great quote from Sam Altman, and he says, uh, "The days are long, but the decades are short." And so, how do you think through? really what you do and how you optimize your time. Like your days are long. Like so he thinks in a decade. Kind of, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, long-term thinking is highly, highly underrated and extremely valuable and very few people do it. I do this all the time. Yeah. I think like five years. Yeah. Ago, it's like, really hard. I it's be, really hard. What? I have do. a 10 year yeah. plan. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I don't, I would love to. I've been, I've been actively thinking about this cause I set my 2019 goals. Yeah. And, um, and I've been trying to think, you know, a year is good because you can do a lot in a year. Mm-hmm. But how do you how do you plan for five years? Totally. When there's so much uncertainty, how do you plan for ten years? Right. You know. And so I'm I'm still like actually, concrete plans. When yeah, I say I, I have a ten yeah, year plan, impossible I'm to my model. my ten year plan is not exactly concrete exactly because it's yeah. impossible. But it's, it's but a, you have a destination. Yes, but I'm, I'm always actively thinking about exactly longer yeah. than. 
next year, two years. Well, and you have to. You it's have it's to. so important it's so for just important. development. Like if you don't know where you're going, it's so easy to just be like, oh, I can watch Netflix. I'm right. not trying to work towards right. something and just sit there. Right. And then you're like, it's been five years. I have nothing to show for it. The fuck am I doing? Yep. You know? And so just actively kind of. And this yeah. is what happened to me yesterday. <laughs> Hope <laughs> just went out for a trip to LA. And I was listening to the Ritual podcast. And then I was like, I got extra time. Let's just sit on my couch and listen to the podcast. And I listened to Killian Joan, this guy who climbed Mount Everest twice in one week. It's insane. And he was like telling how humans are so uncomfortable in their lives. And you have to put yourself out there and put yourself in uncomfortable situations to learn. And I was like, that's it. So I woke up at 2 in the morning, ran a 10K. And then came back and I was (laughs) like, that feels so good. Did you go back to sleep? No, I didn't went back to sleep. And what time are you going to bed at? Seven? I went to seven, seven thirty. <laughs> that's early. No, so going to bed at seven is early. Like I have things it is to early. do. That's like, hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. That's so tough. I, I wanna... start soccer practice at seven thirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, sorry, guys. I can't make practice. I'm yeah. just going to bed. I go to bed. Yeah. 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 So I want to <laughs> I wanna get into, uh, into your childhood. Sure. And where did you grow up? Yeah, absolutely. And how, how did you develop this interest for business? And maybe oh, your family played a role in there. I don't know. Cause oh, yeah. I would depending say so. from where Probably. you... Yeah. Because yeah. I know you're not from Victoria. You're not no. born and raised from Victoria. No, no, no. Yeah, so, so let's I'll, hear it. Yeah, tell, yeah, I'll, tell so us. I'll give you the, I'll give you the kind of cliff notes of my life and you can dive into any point that mm-hmm. you think is mm-hmm. specifically interesting. So I was born in Montreal. I probably lived there for maybe eight months, maybe a year. And so Canadian by birth. And then my... I'm pretty sure my dad worked in D.C. for a little bit, Washington, D.C. And he was, he was doing healthcare tech. And... Um, and then he got a job out in California. And so being one or two at the time, I didn't really have a choice. And so they took me to California. <laughs> Not that I have any ties to Montreal. Makes, makes sense. Exactly. And so <laughs> so I grew up in California and I think I spent, you know, something like 14, 13, 14 years there. It may be a little bit less. less I had no idea. Less, yeah, for, probably for sure, less. Because I think I met yeah. you at 13. Sure. Yeah. We, so we maybe still 10. in Little League. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I grew up in California and um, I started out... I think in Davis, like pretty close to Sacramento area. And then my parents, eventually they bought, it was either 20 or 40 acres. And so I had a lot of space to just run around and, you know, just do my own thing. Right. And just explore. You were close to a ski hill, weren't you? Too? Yes. Yeah. Lake right. Tahoe. So we would mm-hmm. go up every weekend in the summer or uh, sorry, in the winter. So that's where um, your activity snowboarding oriented. Oh yeah. Self became. Yes. Yeah. My dad put me in soccer when I was two, three, oh, nice. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. are your parents from? So my dad's from Iran and my mom's from Italy. Mm. And, very uh, different cultures. Yes, very different. And they met at McGill in Montreal. Mm. So uh, yeah, mm. it, it kind of very interesting happenstance. But um, yeah, I, so I, I grew up in California. I did, you know, I just played outside all the time. Like that's, that's really where I spent the majority of my time. We didn't have TV, so I couldn't just kind of sit there. Um, and I think, you know, maybe two, two or three points that may point to my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial kind of development connection connection. sure yeah um there was a there was a record store like vinyls like old vinyls Mm -hmm. and the owner died he used to live in the store and he died and so my parents won the they put in a bid for the record store and they won it out of a silent auction Hmm. and so we we had a like a store of records to ourselves so what they did was they would box up 99 records uh and sell them on ebay and so i remember a lot of trips to storage houses helping my mom and dad carry these boxes of records. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we kept a lot of the best ones for ourselves, obviously. And yeah. my family still has a lot of those. But there was a lot of times where I was like, oh, why do I need to carry boxes? This is stupid. And then my parents would talk about how, you know, it was actually like making really good money. And then one of the things I picked up on was they would put, call it 96 bad records in there just to kind of get rid of them. And they would put three really good ones. So they're like, it's these three plus the rest are random. You could get lucky. You could not get lucky. And that's how we <laughs> unloaded a bunch and we charged a premium. So that was really good. And then my mom also owned a bakery. So um, that's, she just works insanely hard. Like it's like a baker, baker's hours are oh, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. mental. It's so hard. Exactly. Yeah. Anything with regards to um, food and yes. everything like that yeah. is hard. But it especially baking because it's, it's, you have to get the bread out before call it 6 a.m right you have to be there in, at 3 a.m wild yeah so she did that my dad worked in tech as well and then um yeah it was an amazing childhood it was really it was really so great. your parents kind of 
shaped you into a person who is interested in business with their guys to your childhood. You were around open in business. Un unknowingly. And hard I working. Suppose. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I don't think I had like a great, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to start companies when no. I'm older. Do you, do you think it would have been different if your parents would have been like, here, here's a video game, go play this all the time? I mean, it's possible. Like, right? I still, I still did play video games. I actually, <laughs> I remember this one story where, um, like, we had a PS2, but I wasn't allowed to play it by myself. So <laughs> no. I, I, my dad and I that had to play. That is so good. Yeah, and so um, we played Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Best game. Oh, it was so much fun. And I was I was pretty young. I think I was like eight. Anyways, he was at work, and um, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna play a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit ahead. And, you know, he won't notice. It'll be fine. Because I really yeah. want to play because I was home by myself. And instead of booting up the game, I overwrote our saved game. Oh, and I lost oh, all of our progress. He must have busted. Been and I was like, I called him. I was like, dad, <laughs> shit. I'm sorry. And then, and then after, I never played by myself. Like, I was like, I was like, oh, my God. And he was like, he obviously didn't care. He was no, like, he was like, ah, whatever. Yeah, he was like, that serves you right for, like, playing while I'm not there or something. But, but yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. Like, I did, I did play, like, some games when I was young. But it was, it was a lot of playing outside. It was a lot of kind of, like, building forts and, like, exploring. Like, 40 acres is a lot of land. So, Dude, 40 so. acres is massive. You yeah. can do anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that's I had a bow and arrow. I would go yeah. shoot trees that's, and stuff. Like, I would, I would I want that. I cool. want that yeah. to grow vegetables and be yeah. sustainable. Yeah. It was really great. So, I got, I got a question for you. So, you sure. think, do you, knowing at that time when you were going through that phase of unloading the boxes and whatnot, yeah. were you thinking entrepreneurially or now after you've gone, started your own company? And I've gone to school and now reflected, do you think that's just you, that you think that was the starting where you first were introduced? Yeah. Or it's were much, you it's much more retrospective. You know, right, yeah. right. It's, it's you didn't know what was actually going on there's at, no, the, there's at no the time. Way. There's right. no way. Um, no, I, there's be, no way. You'd be an absolute genius if you're yeah. thinking like that yeah. at the age of six. Seven. Sure. Yeah. I mean. Right. I'm not saying you're not a genius. Well, I'm not a genius. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. No. You just work hard. I, 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 yeah. I probably work harder than most. Um, no, there's no way I could have known, uh, you know, thinking back on it, it, it was great experience. I think one of the things that I can thank my parents for is my work ethic. Like even when I was yeah, they showed 13, you what... 14. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, Cause my mom, she, uh, she worked at Cobb's bread coming here and she now owns a Cobb's bread. And so she needed bakers. And so I was doing baking chefs when I was 14 and it was like, you're up at two 30, you're in the bakery at three and you just go, go, go until, you know, like 11 in the afternoon. And, um, not a lot of fourteen-year-olds work baking chefs. Like that is a hard, hard job. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so that that taught me a lot about work ethic. And then obviously my dad just worked on a ton of projects in his spare time. You know um, what? I get it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You I you yeah. Yeah. I, I knew that yeah. about Kimia, but I didn't, I, know, I didn't know you were born in you're born in Montreal. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I, and I also am a dual citizen, so I'll be moving to the states fairly soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that is so interesting. Yeah. Because when I saw you in high school, yeah, you had that mentality of hard work, and I saw it with you playing rugby and soccer. Yeah. And I appreciate I, you saying that. Yeah. And I it knew it. A lot. And I was, and I've always wondered how did, cause where did of, it come from? Where yeah. did it come from? Because a lot of people get it from other places. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very interesting to hear how your childhood played a big role yeah. in your work ethic. I think I think one of the other things I think about a lot when I'm doing anything, and this is especially. Uh, on like a sports field, but um, you're there to do a job. Your job is to win and you do whatever it takes to make that happen. And then at the end you can leave. Right. And a lot of, a lot of people, like I'll see people, um, I won't name names, but there's one guy on my team and anytime anything, the coaches give him any feedback or anything, he's like, Oh, my ankle hurts. Or like he'll make some excuse. And I'm like, you're here to do a job. Your job is to take feedback, get better, and then put the ball in the net, right? Like that is soccer. Like move the ball, don't get killed. It's a simple game. Exactly. It's not hard, right? And so like you coming up with these excuses, you're not doing your job. It drives you nuts. It drives it me nuts. It kills me. It, kill it absolutely kills when me. When people don't have work ethic, oh, you it's want to shake them. It's crazy. Right? Because it's yeah. the simplest thing that you could do. You don't need to be smart exactly. to have work ethic. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It Like being – there is a there is a level of – intellect that will get you to say point x and then a lot of people if you work hard enough you can push past point x 
Like it, you can outwork a lot of smart people and be incredibly successful, even if you're not that intelligent. But I want to know what is the motivation behind this hard working? Do you remember your parents working hard or do oh, you have yeah, a main yeah. goal My, in mind? I don't think so. I think it's just an internal driver. It's internal driver? Yeah. I, it's, for me, I'm either on 100% of the time or I'm asleep. Like it's, I just go. Yeah. Um, do you, th do you think when you are working or when you're playing sports yeah. and you want to give your hundred percent, do you think to yourself, I want myself to be viewed as the best in the field or do you try to beat yourself from the day before? That's an interesting question. Um, cause it be the, I don't, or I don't think, it, yeah, no, no, for or. sure. For sure. That, then that's why it's an interesting question. I don't think it's an external thing. Like, like if someone looked at me and they're like, he's the 75th percentile of hardest working people. Yeah. I would be like, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But if I'm giving it my all and we win, then fantastic. We won. You know, like today I played a game and there were a few times where I could have done a little bit better. And I reflect on those. I'm like, okay, next time that's not going to happen. Right? It's just, it's just continual improvement of hard work. Um, and there's a few people on my team who work extremely hard. And so I, I look at them and like, well, if they're busting their ass and I'm just walking, then that's unfair to them. So my team expects me to do my job, right? And then same with same with work, right? Like I'm I'm there to do something and anything I can do above and beyond is fantastic. So I will do everything in my power to ch achieve, you know, X goal or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you just keep you just keep pushing. So you hold yourself accountable to other people? To other people or myself? I both, I would say. Both? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like so if I set you... a goal, I try and hit it. So The way a lot of people work is they set goals. Yeah. And then they hold themselves accountable to the job. Yeah. And then what I do is I tell a lot of people what my goals are. Yeah. So they, public accountability is a big thing. It's really true. That's what I do. All, and do yeah. you find yourself doing that? Yeah, I do. Um, I was especially deliberate in sharing my 2019 goals with a, a few smart people that I respect. And yeah. I have them check in with me. Like, how is your goal going? Why aren't you doing this? Yeah. Why are you doing this? It's so powerful. It is. The the one trap that you fall into is by telling other people you are going to do something, you already feel good about it. Yeah. And so you have, you have to be cognizant of even though I'm telling people I'm going to do this, I haven't done it yet. So you still have to put in the work because there's a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week and I'm going to get super fit. And they feel good just by saying they're going to go to the gym seven days a week, but they don't actually go. Right. And so that is a trap that I am aware of that I try not to fall into. Because it's creating an image. Exactly. Do you so, have, oh, exactly. that guy's doing this, but... Exactly. No. Yeah. So do you, are they? <laughs> do you have those certain people that you know that they're going to ask you? Like... Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like this people? Thursday, I have a call with someone who's checking up on me on my goals. That's exactly... Holding what I think is the best yeah. thing to do if you find yourself with a friend yep. and you say, hey, yeah. that doesn't judge you, doesn't yeah. pull you. That's to huge. Not try judging to keep you is huge. Try to keep you in line. Hey, yeah. how's it going? How's that project going? Yeah. Yeah. And then you openly say, hey, you know what? It's been so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah. yeah. I've been killing it. Exactly. Man. I feel that's exactly. very powerful. Yeah. And there's there's no right answer. And so um, I have the three people I've picked, I would say, are ahead of me in life for where I want to go. Yeah. And it, that's intentional because it puts me in a position where they're already ahead of me. So if I'm not doing this, it's like, okay, they're on their own kind of platform and they check in with me and they say, how's this going? Okay. Why haven't you done this? Or why have you done this? Um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but <laughs> do you consider them mentors then? Yeah. I mean, no, actually, no, that's not true. Cause I have a separate, um, I have a separate, place in my goals for my mentors and I check with check in with them at least once a month um, but I have selected people who I think are better than me because I try and push myself to that level and that's just the theory of life you are the average of the five people that's true that you hang around with that's true and that you immerse yourself with so what if you're surrounded by no one then it's then you and your soul you're just by yourself that's and your tough. soul yeah So if you're that's surrounded by no one, power to yeah, 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 yeah. If you're by yourself and you're achieving these goals, that's that's pretty crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm, that's not me. And I'm saying, do you think that a lot of people nowadays surround themselves with people that are lesser than them or have less capability than than themselves? It's possible, right? Yeah, I in I think, order to make themselves feel better. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen right. that all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's easy to hang out with easy people mm -hmm. and there are 
more and more easy people every day because it's hard to push yourself to want more. Right. Yeah. It's easy to go to the bar and like have a few drinks and just relax. And it's easy to say, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You didn't hit that goal, right? You didn't save up however much money you're trying to save up to buy a house right? as an investment. Um, a lot of people kind of don't get it. And so, yeah, I would say people do surround themselves with, you know, people who are close to them or like close in proximity, like easy to hang out with, or they just kind of get along, but they're not necessarily, they're like drinking buddies. They're not necessarily propelling you in the right direction. Right. So we touched on your business a little bit. You're like talking about, oh, I had these plans with this business. That's right. So where did you start? Did you go to university where yeah we i, I know sure i know, I know the of answer course, to this because we had this the conversation the audience wants to hear of course how did you start what so, did you do did you graduate yeah so i uh, so i'll give you i'll give you the cliff notes of the kind of entrepreneurial journey right and then you know we can right again we'll go post highs so let's say post highs sure yeah, what have you so, done the last five years uh i've done a lot <laughs> so post high school um, my dream was corporate law. I was going to be a corporate lawyer. Interesting. I am not a corporate lawyer right now. So <laughs> something happened there. Um, yeah, basically, uh, when I was, I went, I got into solder business school and my, my goal was going to be get through business school and then go to law school and then become a corporate lawyer. And I have no real reason why I wanted to be a corporate lawyer aside from my dad knew this guy who drove a really nice car. I was like, <laughs> yes, yeah. that, whatever that guy does, I want to do that because he looks dope. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then, and, you know, when I was at, when I was at UBC, I basically, uh, you know how people collect kind of like baseball cards. I collect legal business cards. And so I would just network with every corporate lawyer in the city. Like I just talked to everyone. And I, I remember talking to this uh, I, I was talking to this one lawyer who said, oh, is, there's this event that's going on. Are you going to go? And I was like, well, no. Can you get me in? So I basically talked my way into this, this swanky entrepreneurial legal mixer. And so there's entrepreneurs and the lawyers are there trying to be like, hey, here's all these drinks. Let us be your legal representation. And there was this one guy there, Ken from Procurify. And he was – he kind of looked at a place. He didn't really look like he wanted to talk to any lawyer. So I approached him and I was like, hey, what do you work on? Who are you? What do you do? And we got into this topic of the idea that you can create something from nothing so valuable that customers will pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year for it, blew my mind. And I was like, that's amazing. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with uh, trying to get into law school. I should just do that. That's way better. You're creating way more value, right? And so um, I basically, in my own naivete, I was looking at companies like, how hard can that be? I can do that. Like, I'm sm- I'm smarter than a lot of founders. Like, it can't be that hard. And so that's a powerful thinking right there. Well, it was it was also it, very wrong. I can do it better. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, but it was a driving factor. True, very true. It. <laughs> so I say, you know, in retrospect, how hard can it be? Extremely hard. <laughs> it is very very difficult to start a company, but it's you know it's it's the, probably the best thing that I've done to date. And I think it's it's an incredible experience for just people in general, just trying to create value for others. But anyways, um, at UBC, I started talking to a few of my professors. I was like, hey, you know, what do you think is interesting? And eventually I settled on an Instagram for moments of achievement. And so basically what Instagram was, was you or this what moments was, was you could upload a photo at the end of your moment of achievement. So if you run a 5K or you run a 10K, you snap a selfie at the end and you say, oh, best time just ran my marathon or 10K or 5K or whatever it is. And then you, whatever the hashtag was, businesses could see those hashtags and reward you for what you've done. So Nike could say, hey, great job Mm -hmm. on your 5K. Here's a $10 gift card to the online store. And so there's two reasons why I still like that idea, but I'll also talk about why it didn't work. The first idea is the brand owns that moment in your mind. And so if you think about your moment of achievement, it's usually a happy thought. Achievements are usually positively associated. The other side of that is if a brand reaches out to reaches out to you, they're basically buying that moment. And when they think about it, they're like, oh, yeah, that 5K, I feel so good. Oh, and I got a $10 gift card from Nike. So now Nike has a positive light in that person's mind, right? Um, building a social network is incredibly difficult. And so especially when Instagram was on its upswing, that was really, really hard. And then the an ad network inside of a social network is even harder because – if you think about Instagram's value proposition at the time, which was maybe five, four, four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Um, their whole thing was ad-free. 
right? This is a social network, which is free of ads. So eventually that actually didn't go anywhere, but I learned a lot about um, Instagram and I learned a lot about business and starting a company and building a team. I remember you telling me about this idea yes. in front of Oak Bay Rec Center. Like really? four years oh, ago. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was exact, the same, the sure. exact same thing that you just Well, I've said. told the story many yeah. times. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of but no, I but this, yeah, no, this, yeah. You told me like as it was happening. Sure, yeah. Like, oh, I have so a that must have been interesting guy. to watch from an external perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that eventually didn't really go anywhere, but what that got me into was um, behavioral shopping. And so, you know, we were looking at how people purchase things. And the idea was, say you're looking at a dress, right? And you look at four dresses and you spend 30 seconds on the first three and a minute on the fourth one. You can infer that you want that dress more than the other three, right? And so we would send you exit intent pop-ups that would say, hey, wait, don't go. Here's 25% off that dress that you were looking at for a little bit longer. Um... That sort of led me into my next company, which was uh, MarketBase. And so what MarketBase was, was dropshipping um, from AliExpress. And uh, how much do you know about dropshipping? Like, should I explain what dropshipping is? Yeah, I, I know what no dropshipping is. No one out there knows. Sure, it. true. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Please, so, please tell us. So if you imagine dropshipping, there's parties A, B, and C, right? Party A is the customer. Party B is the middleman. And party C is the supplier. They actually own the products. So what dropshipping is, is when A buys from B, but C ships directly to A. So you imagine a triangle, right? Um, the reason why that's so powerful is you can have a store with no inventory. And so you can just scale up and then take the arbitrage. So what I figured out pretty early on was Instagram influencers did not understand their value in terms of cost per click. So in standard advertising models, cost per click is how much the platform will charge a business to get one click to the site, right? A good cost per click on Google is like one cent. Um, that's like, that's what you want. The lower, the better, right? Because then you don't have to pay for clicks. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, what I figured out is Instagram influencers don't understand their value. So they would get 30,000 likes and I could give them $10 to promote my product. So that's like 0. 0.000000003 cents per click. click. It's like incredibly valuable. Yeah. So... What I kind of, what we, what my partners and I did was we would build these stores and we would generate all this traffic from Instagram because we would reach out to this person who's like a 14 year old kid in Brazil with 300,000 fans from a Facebook fan page and say, Hey, we have this Facebook store. Can we send you a necklace plus $10 to promote our uh, picture for 12 hours? Right. And they would say, yeah, of course I can make money from Instagram. That's crazy. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so the, the hard part was building out the, the relationships with the influencers. And so we figured out that find out, find the people who want to get, build these e-commerce stores. We'll handle all the back end work. So, uh, inventory support, uh, customer service, uh, site management, that kind of stuff. And they go out and market and build the stores and we take a 30% cut and they get 70%. And so there was, there was 12 stores, 17 people working on that, which was really exciting. But the real value there was the Instagram influencer network, right? And so I went to my business partner and I was like, look, like these stores are unsustainable. If a warehouse leaves the, the supplier, we have, we can't go to China. We can't say, Hey, don't, don't leave. Like we should try and build this up. If they leave, we're gone, right? The store just dies. So we should try and actually sell the influencer network to other businesses and try and make that work. My business partner at the time was like, no, that's a stupid idea. We should stick with the stores. So I actually left because we had this big falling out. And so I sold my shares back to the company took a little bit of time and our most profitable store two weeks later was hit with a cease and desist. And so eventually all the stores just kind of <laughs> fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that just was God feeling right there. That was, yeah, that was my, that was my second, that was my second company. Um, and then that led me into ghost it, which is what I'm running right now. And so what ghost it is, is content marketing automation software, but we also have the writers on staff. So if you imagine a, a social media scheduling calendar. Yeah. Instead of you having to write all the content, we have the writers. They actually write all the content. You log in. You just see all your blog posts, your email posts, your Twitter posts, all that good stuff. Uh, they review it. It all looks good. And it automatically posts to all their networks. So their Facebook, their LinkedIn, their Twitter, um, their email list, that kind of stuff. And so it's their online presence done for you. And so that's that's what I run today. And we have you know customers all over the world. We have a team all over the world. Um, you know. Hundreds What's your of dollars biggest a year. social media or your main social media platform out of all the platforms that are available today? 
like which one gets which the most one, engagement? Yeah, what one do you use the most, or what one do you do rely oh, on the most? Oh, fa- so Facebook, hand, Facebook. hands really? down. Really? Right. Yeah, unfortunately, um, <laughs> their API, their API sucks. Yeah, um, Facebook by far. I personally don't use Facebook that that much, aside from groups. So that's where I'm spending a lot of my time is just doing customer development and and actually going through you know software as a service groups and going through content marketing groups and and all that all that fun stuff so do you also play around because you say you create all the contact mm-hmm. you create all the content yeah and you put it out there yeah do they also give you a chunk of money to play with facebook ads and go through all the filtrations of demographics and who sees there do you also go to that extent so we do like that who does it reach do you yes. play with the reach yes yeah, so we do that as a baseline for the content so we what we do is we onboard each customer and then we build a content marketing strategy for them so buyer personas keyword research what's going to resonate with the audience who do, like what kind of brand do they want to portray online all that stuff goes through the the questionnaire and then um, if they want facebook ads they can pay us a management fee plus either spend or whatever it is and we'll we'll take that on but the majority of our revenue is from content creation right do you think spending money on facebook ads is a good idea will it overall enhance oh it's huge yeah absolutely it's it's direct traffic right with the thing with seo search engine optimization is it takes a lot of time so if you don't have a high domain authority site you're going to your content is going to take a long time to rank what facebook ads do is they allow you to just circumvent that process and so you could say, I'm going to pay X number of dollars to send traffic directly to my blog post. And the blog posts are designed with a specific action in mind. So is it subscribe to an email newsletter? Is it convert into a sale? Is it generate brand awareness, right? And so, yes, it's, it's very effective. Cool. So I'll marketing play. is very powerful. It's totally. It's Facebook huge. ads is really stuff. cool. You should check it out, man. I yeah. played around with Facebook ads yeah. lots. There's, you can you can nail down the, oh, demo- the demographic, demographic targeting is it's, absolutely crazy. It's yeah. insane yeah. how well, in with depth. 2 billion people, of course. Yeah, yeah course. definitely. But yeah. it's crazy how much Facebook knows. Oh, yeah. That's you, a whole nother topic. It's, it's crazy. I, I swear I swear down. You could go through and be like, okay, I'm going to go with this guy. Oh, yeah. Favorite kind of sandwich. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Based well, there's, on his there's clicks. Other things. It, yeah, it's well, crazy. The retargeting stuff is pretty crazy too. So if someone lands on your site, you can drop pixels on them and then it'll just follow them around the web and say, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And it works really well. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've seen – so have you seen the Amazon stuff? Yeah. When you view a product and yeah. then you leave? Right, right. That is – Almost right. the exact same thing, but you can set that up for yourself on Facebook ads. Right. Yeah. So, so, it's, it gets so many really big companies have that. Yes. So they oh, think what if pixel dropping? Is that what? Yeah. It? yeah it's it's called a Facebook pixel, and okay. what that pixel does is it basically tracks that person around the web. Interesting. Yeah. So do you think that if someone is out there trying to open a company or trying to do something, they should take time and look at marketing and all the social medias? And oh yeah, absolutely. How do they do it? I would. How do you start a company? No, how do you... Oh, how do you get into marketing? Into marketing sure. your own company into all this social media. So, well, use Ghost It. Oh, there you go. Say, I was going to Ghost It. I'll be the answer. If he's not going to say it, say it I'm going to say it. Yeah, so, I mean, we can take care of all that for you. <laughs> that right? was the answer I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, they can contact if, you. Yes. And they can say, hey, exactly. man. G-H-O-S-T-I-T dot C-O. Hey, before we get it, where can we find you? Like where where are all your platforms? Oh, your it. oh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. post post it with Ghostit. Just search search up Ghostit content anywhere. So they send you an email. It. Go look at your website. Yeah, check it out. It has all the information you're gonna need. Ghost. There you yeah. go. So if yeah. you're out there and you have an amazing idea and you're yeah. starting up a company and you want to promote it and get in there exactly. and you don't know what to do, exactly reach out to Mister Kibi. Exactly. There you go. Yes. yes. Well, that is very exciting to be honest. Yeah. But did you five years ago did you had any idea? What you no. would be doing. No, there's no chance. So that's the there's thing. No way. I For thought any... I was going to be a corporate lawyer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I feel like it is very powerful with regards to trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, and then all of a sudden it hits. And I've heard so many stories and so many podcasts of people who just keep trying. Oh, yeah. And the resilience of keep trying. Like, why didn't yeah. you Why didn't you quit after your second company? Why starting yeah. a third one? Why? I've, I've thought about that quite a bit, and I don't think I have a good answer yet. No. I think and I don't I don't like the answer where it's, you know, it's it's in my blood. Like just starting well, starting not. companies cuz that's not it's not true. Um I think part of the answer Look is Look into your soul, into your why. Yeah, part of part of the answer is there's an opportunity to create value 
So there's there's some piece of it that's like the real reason why I started Ghost It is because I was looking at business Facebook pages and I was just like, these are awful. Like these are so bad. They're I, so empty. There's oh, nothing yeah, in there. Yeah, exactly. Like one of one of our first customers was an insurance company and they were posting pictures of like a dog and like it was their last post was in 2017. And you're like, come on, people. Yeah, and I was like, if someone goes to your site or your Facebook page and they see 2017 and no relevant insurance information, they're, they're just gonna assume they're just gonna leave. That Looks yeah. like yeah, the company exactly. is dead. dead. Exactly. So I thought, would businesses pay me a hundred dollars a month to do this? And it was a resounding yes. Like they all would. And then obviously we just kept increasing our prices and build out a bigger value proposition. So I think one of the one of the the core whys is the opportunity is there and it's a it's a problem not necessarily that I care about, which is something I'm trying to improve upon. Um, the opportunity is there, but also it's something that I am able to do and change how people do things currently. So sol- mm-hmm. like solving a problem is the number one thing that I think is important when you're actually looking to start a business. Solving a problem. Yeah. Identify it. Exactly. And, try to and, solve and it. talk to people about it. Because I have also thought people are going to pay for something. And I'm like, this is an obvious problem. I, I have this. This is obvious. Everyone's <laughs> going to pay me thousands of dollars. I'm going to be a billionaire overnight. <laughs> and then I build it. And then we launch it. Or well, I don't build it. But you know, the team builds it and we launch it. No one has that problem. And so you really, you really have to validate before to make sure that, yes, it's a problem and it's acute enough that people will pay you money for it. Okay. So kind of a question on that. You said, oh, I have this problem. Sure. People must have this problem. Yeah. Do you have something that you do that you think other people would think that, that whatever that is, is crazy? Something that you do frequently. Yeah. That's an interesting that question. Others would think that is crazy. Like, for example, Manuel frequently wakes up at 3 a.m. in the morning. That is crazy. That's, <laughs> I think that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, but he, but no, he gets I stuff. Don't, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe my schedule is pretty crazy. Like, for a, for a while, I was waking up at 6, working, going to the gym, and then going back to work. And then, like, working until, like, 9 for, like, a, like months. That's full on. Yeah. Yeah, like I would, I would sleep for like seven hours, and I would just work. You, you have no life. Yeah, and I guess well, like he did have well, a life. life. Well, my life was work, have, and I right. it was designed that way. Um, and then I would have uh, date nights with my girlfriend because she would lose her mind at me right. if I don't actually schedule so you that think time. That back. schedule puts strain on all your other relationships, like my friends. Yeah, uh, it's, it's possible, right? I mean, I try and make time for them, but I don't really. Like I have, I have selective friends and a lot of them now are through work connections. Right. And so they're all just interested in kind of what I'm doing. And so, you know, we would work together or something like that. So no, I don't, I don't think I do anything so abnormal that people would think it's crazy. Yeah, but then again, yeah. like I probably, I probably do. And I just can't think of a good answer. So what are your value every day? What are your values? Well, my values every day. What are you guys doing that is a every lot, single day? That's a big question. Well, tell me, <laughs> sure. what do you value every single day you wake up? What are your top values that you want to achieve every single day? Uh, values or like, because a value is something internal to me, mm-hmm. yeah. but like a to-do. Or are you asking values or to do Like, do you value your fitness? Oh, you value sure. Value yes. Emotional, physical, right. mental state. Relationships. You, yes. Value relationships. Family. So basically how religion. I schedule my time around my values. Exactly. Right. right. That's right. an interesting question as well. Um, fitness is huge for me. Healthy yeah. body, healthy mind. I Has completely been like believe that. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I I grew up being fit. It's there are times where I won't work out and I will just feel like garbage. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I it got makes me physically like and mentally, like you yeah, right? you just feel slow. Mentally right. you feel slow. And so now what I do is I'll eat at my desk at work, like in front of my computer while I'm working on anything, and then I'll go to the gym at lunchtime, which I think is just it's right. just bad. I, I've seen you there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you run into me at the Y. Yeah. Um uh yeah, uh Physical health is is huge. Mm -hmm. I also try and spend some time either learning something new, whether it's through a podcast or reading a book or, or something along those lines. But in my, my, my values day to day is more how I think about what I'm doing long term. So I think one of the, have you guys read principles by Ray Dalio? No, but you recommended that book 
It is to be the last it, time we talk. Yes, okay. you sh- I'm recommending it to both of you again. It I'm is, still I'm waiting on it. my aunt to it go take me on a book date. So to go get that good. Book. It is so <laughs> good. Go, yeah. Yeah. It is it is honestly game changing. And so you know one of the things that Ray Dalio says is doing um, great work with people like smart people who share values. And I'm butchering that quote, but. <laughs> surrounding it's, yourself with like-minded individuals yeah and it's the it's the pursuit of you know good work with good people basically and i do i do try and do that daily and that's 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 really interesting to so me. like networking. am i doing the best what's that you you love networking i do oh yeah i love talking to people yeah, yeah. that's why i, I think i'm really good comes, at sales and it comes easy to you it does so yeah so that's high in your values networking it, exactly yeah but i wouldn't say networking is a value no I, no, I would say connecting with people who are interesting so I can learn from them, mm-hmm. which tracks back to my value of trying to experience new things. And network is a perk that comes yeah, from Yeah, ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. I think, you know, and you cannot overstate the value of a network. My network has saved me more times than I can say. Mm-hmm. It is so valuable to it just is. know people. Who are vested in either, not necessarily vested in your success, but just don't think you're a dick. <laughs> it's true. You can it's call really up a person true. and say, hey, what do you yes. think of this? Hey, can you help exactly. me out here? Hey, exactly. Exactly. You want to go for a run? Hey, yeah. you want to do anything? Go, I need, like, I just need to talk. I just need to talk about something. So you right? talked about your girlfriend as well? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You need some water. <laughs> you need, need you some, need some water. water. Where are the waters? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take a break. <laughs> I seriously need water. I've been choking. Yeah, yeah. Let's time. get some water. You can, you can edit it. Manny's going to drop the question. And we're back. And we're back. We had a little break. I was coughing. <coughs> I think uh, you needed that water. You needed I that needed water. That water man. I, wasn't, I was in the salt water yeah, all you're day. You're inhaling diving. salt water all day. Yeah, salt my water. mouth is so salty right now. So I love it though. But the point of diving is to not drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, you're next the time, water. my next lips time are you full know. of salt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were yeah. talking about values before our little break. Yes. And I want to listen to... Do you think of your family a lot or your girlfriend or anything? Nah, never. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. Of course, of course I do. Um, it, it's family and family and is super important to me. And obviously my girlfriend's very important to me. We've been together for four and a half years. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't as close with my family. I think help, I, what me moving out helped me become closer with my family. That is so it's, true. It's Same with me. so crazy. I don't know why. you all the time. Yeah, I, maybe. Right, yeah. And then you understand, that you understand that life's sh- too short. Yes. And then you just like think, it just it creates something inside of you to make you reach out. May, uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know I, what it is. Because I, I, I've I heard that. It. That's not the first time I heard it. True. Right. Uh, Matt Manuel. Other, yeah. Other people. As yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm. I yeah. Why. Like hmm. my family. My well, my family has supported me throughout any endeavor and every endeavor that I've decided to embark upon. Uh, and so is my girlfriend, obviously. So it is it is very, very important to me that I also, you know, support them in their time of need. So yeah, I, I think about my family a lot and I try and I'm not as good as I should be, but you know, my dad calls me and I'll call my dad in my time and I'll check in on my family. I should go see them more in person. <laughs> I need to improve upon that, but I am aware of that. So yeah. Yeah. Totally. So an, a question, it's an interesting one. Advice you would give your 20-year-old self and advice you would give your 35-year-old self. Oh, man. 20-year-old self okay. first. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with my 20-year-old self yes. first. Because um, we knew them. No. Yeah, because I knew, I knew that person. Yeah. Uh, don't be such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Don't like... So <laughs> one of the things that I... I'm, I'm not joking. I was not a nice... Mm-hmm. I would say you were pretty nice in high school. Mm, was I? Yeah, you're all right. Well, you've had me on the podcast, so <laughs> <Yeah>. obviously, <laughs> I, I think one of the things that I didn't do a good job of was I was just very insensitive. Yeah, and I am still sort of insensitive, but I'm much more tactful about it. Uh, my 20 year old self would be think about think about what's the worst that can happen, and then think about different outcomes when you interact with people and also remember that people are different and everyone views things differently. Yeah. Really, really hold on to it, but not just, not just think about it, like internalize that. Cause that's what I do now. 
And so I'll give you a good example. Say my girlfriend and I are fighting, right? We are probably not fighting because she doesn't like me. We're probably fighting because she's upset about something. So she's like, oh, we're not working. I'm so unhappy. And it's like, no, no, you're not. You're unhappy because I haven't been home for the past three days. And when I get home, we're not spending any quality time. Is that the problem? And then she'll say, no, that's not the problem. And I'm like, okay, well, what if we went on a date tomorrow? Would that make you happy? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that was obviously the problem. You're right. right? So that's, that's the advice I would give to my 20-year-old self. My, my 35-year-old self. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's hard. Mm-hmm. That's hard. And that comes into play of what do you want to do? Like, sure. What's your main goal that's, in life? That's reflecting on your long-term plan. It, can I give my 35-year-old self questions? Yeah. yeah. Or do I have to give them... Tell me anything that you want to both, tell you. Both. Okay. Okay. Uh, the reason why I asked this yeah. question is because we were talking about the long-term plan. Yes. And, that is and good. I, it is a good question. And my question was only, what would you tell your 20-year-old 20, 20 self? Sure. And then I added this one on because yeah. I was like, okay, this, I want to hear it. Yeah. So one of the things that I would, I would tell my 35-year-old self, and I will probably, I've sort of internalized this, so I think it'll carry forward, but uh, deferred plans rarely work. And I learned that from Sam Altman because he was saying, you know, if you look at someone who wants to go build rockets and they're like, okay, I'm going to start a payments company to make a bunch of money and then I'm going to use that money to go build rockets. It's like, why don't you just go work for SpaceX and build rockets, right? Um, I would tell my 35-year-old self, stop deferring your plans because I guarantee you at 35, I will have plans and I'm probably deferring some of them. (laughs) So that seems like pretty safe advice. So act on your plans. No, not act. Uh, Well, yeah, act. But... Don't put them to the side. Be, de- be deliberate. So a good example might be if I want to be a founder and I am working, it's like, why don't I go raise money to be a founder? Like, why don't I give up a small percentage of my company to be a founder right now instead of working to then invest in my company later, right? Okay. So that, yeah. So don't defer your plans. Um, a few questions is, you know, where am I like physically? Because I really want to be in Austin, Texas. But if I don't go there, why haven't I gone there? Right? Am I, am I a founder? What am I doing with my time? Do I still value all the same things that I value now? Right? How has the world changed? I have so many questions. So, the world will change. Let oh, me tell you that. for yeah, sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's undeniable. Has there been the recession? I'm very afraid that a recession is coming. Soon. I know. And I'm really, it really worries me. And so has that happened? I don't know. But it's been 11 years since the last one. I know. It's too long. Mm-hmm. It's, it's concerning. Mm-hmm. It's concerning. <laughs> and there's but so much infl- inflammation. Inflammation. Inflation. 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 Yeah. yeah. There's so much yeah. inflammation in your yeah. legs. <laughs> there is. Oh, man. Years. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, so, much I'm inf- so sore inflation right now. Inflation is so many yeah. different markets. That's a, that is a good question, though. How to, what advice I would give my 35-year-old self. That's interesting. Um, that is my attempt at an answer. It's is very it, good is it a good one? I don't, I'm not I too like sure. I like how I added questions because it's, it's the unknown. For sure. Right? Yeah, and that's, that's what makes it really good. So I want to snowball this into this question with regards to in business, do you think it's essential to be a curious person? Absolutely. Absolutely. Bar none. You can't, you can't be in business without being curious because the idea is to constantly be adding the most value as possible all the time, right? Mm -hmm. The best businesses solve a core problem. And if you're not curious, you're going to build once, you're going to solve a problem, and then you're going to be successful for a time. But then when the time comes to change and problems shift, and you're not asking the right questions, you're going to miss that shift, right? Kodak is a great example of this. Blackberry is also probably a great example of this. There are big companies who miss these problems because they probably either don't have the right infrastructure in place. Exactly. So, you have you cannot not be curious. You have to be curious. What other traits does a founder, business person need to have? I think the tenacity, really, the, the relentlessness and the tenacity. Like like I mentioned before, I've started this is my third company. And it ghosted is by no means a million, like like a hundred million dollar, billion dollar company. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna keep trying to make it so, or eventually start something else that will become that. So I think the tenacity is really, really part of it. I think the other thing too is, excuse me, 
really respecting and understanding other people's values. There are a lot of people in business who it's my way or the highway and they're just, they're not doing a good enough job of understanding where people want to be mm-hmm. and where people are trying to get to. Uh, Patty McCord from Netflix, she was their uh, talent and HR specialist. She said something really interesting where it was like, what if Netflix was a great place to be from, right? So if you think about someone who was working at Google, it's like, whoa, you were a Googler, right? Like that's cool. But if you were from Netflix, how do you breed that culture? And so from, for the leaders, how do you make sure that you understand where everyone wants to go? And that's really, really important. Not a lot of people think about that. Interesting. So it's not just thinking about yourself. It's thinking about the yes. whole company from the top to the bottom yes. as well as your consumers. Yeah, exactly. That's, I think that's a, that's a good way to put it. There's, there's so many moving parts, so it's impossible to do that. Yeah. But then you think about hiring competent managers, right? So how do you put the right people in place to make the right decisions? I feel like um, when I started uh, my club at the university, I had to compromise a lot. And I feel like that's a trait that it comes with business overall. Compromising I would say so. with other people's thought, like you say, a lot yeah. of people say it's my way or the highway. Yes. Do you usually find yourself compromising? I do. Um, I think you can usually find a winning solution on on all angles. Exactly. There are there are times where I have to yield certain positions where I don't want to. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah, for the most part there are there are tra- there are always trade-offs to be made and you can never know if you're making the right trade-offs especially in business because there's usually not a right answer. Yeah. And I feel like if you take a step back and don't look at that little trade that you're doing and look at it into a rabbit hole if Mm -hmm. you take a a step back and look at the bigger picture maybe you find a reason and a why you are compromising that's Uh, yeah that's a good point too and that's uh, i heard this in the podcast in rich roll that about presidents Mm -hmm. that everyone just wants to become a president sure and then once like of the united states yeah Oh, interesting. And then when they get there, they have all of these ideas and then they have to compromise their ideas. That's true. Because, for example, we need Syria in in order to trade with this, this, and this other country. You cannot just cut them. Right. And people need to understand and take a step back of, okay, I need to compromise here. I can't. (laughs) Government especially, you have to to be compromising at all times. And you you really have to. Well, you know, I've never worked in government. I don't know. (laughs) No. But from what I've read and understood and seen, yeah, you're absolutely right. Is it the same in business? Probably not to such an extreme. Yeah. Like versus the president. But yeah, I mean, there's there's daily trade-offs all the time. Like we could go into a whole rabbit hole of decision making. How do you make the right decisions? Right? What factors do you have to consider? Is it strategic to your end goals or is it not? Right? There's a variety of factors. And this also, I also think about this when I think about um, how I interact with people. Mm-hmm. So am I, am I saying the right things and am I doing, not, not necessarily the right things, but am I doing things to either project the right image in my head where maybe I'm just exhausted. I just like don't feel like talking to anyone. But it's like, hey, like I'm, I'm here and I'm engaged with what you're saying. You're present in the moment. Exactly. Right. And which is a big issue, I think, with a lot of people. You find they don't, a lot of the conversations people have, and this is why we, one of the reasons of why we started this podcast is to kind of get under the surface of the superficial conversation, mm-hmm. get a little more deep, deeper. Yeah. Podcasts are a great medium for that. I mean, it's, it's very personal. And, you know, we can sit here and we can have this conversation. So I absolutely commend you guys for Right. That. Because yeah. I've had conversation with you before, not saying it was superficial. Of course not. But it's just, just on skim level. Yes. Just skimming the yes. surface, right? Yeah. But now we can actually sit down, sit across from each other and, totally. and talk. Yeah, I, I think I think attention spans are shrinking. You need to focus. You do. Dude. You do really like, need to focus. It is a it is a big deal. And you need to get rid of all distractions. Like you yeah. said when you came in, I have two pot plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you said, I really don't want to because I don't want it. To slow me down a second, if there's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah my my case for I'll restate my case on yeah. like because I think it's interesting. Um, my case for not smoking marijuana ever in my life is if there's a one percent chance that it slows me down and makes me lazy, I don't want to risk it. It's not worth it to me 
to, to take that risk. And then the other part to it too is I'm more proud of the fact to say that I've never tried it and I'm not curious enough to try it. So it's more of a point of pride because most people have. So it's a conversation point. So you find that your focus attention span throughout the day, how do you train that? It's, I think focus like anything is a muscle. Yeah. You just, you just have to relentlessly try and be focused there. I'm not perfect. Like I will, I will be unfocused at times for sure. And my version of being unfocused is thinking up new business ideas and how, how to execute them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it does, excuse me, it does draw my focus away from what I'm working on. So no one, no one's perfect, but I, I think just being caught, like you're already 90% better if you're cognizant of the fact that you can lose your focus yeah. and then you just try and improve it. Do you have a mantra time. of when you try to lose, when you find yourself losing your focus, do you have a mantra of saying, okay, Kimia, get your shit together. Let's no, do this. I don't. No? But what I do, what really helps me focus is going to a different place with my noise canceling headphones and playing the same song on repeat. Hmm. So the so the, the mantra could be that same song, but I find if I if I have my headphones on and the songs just keep going and I just put it on, I'll get into this flow state where I'm just yeah. like crushing out my goals. And then the other thing too is I have a pretty good structure to my to-do list. And so every I every I break down every day and then I break it down by the the top three things that I'm gonna work on in that day. And so I'll add either subtasks to those things or I'll add tasks un, like below those, but I will only work on those three things. And then when I finish those three, then I can start to work on other things. But when I've finished those three, it'll go into my day and then I'll start the next day. So at the end of the week, I can open up my to-do list and I can just see all the things that I've done. And I can look at it and I can say, well, I really wasn't that focused because it took me two days to do this one thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, having it written down is really important too, but... Not for a mantra. I don't no, think that. It, it I've is. never even thought but about you that. You did mention putting on your headphones. Yes. And trying to listen to this song. Yes. And here goes the next question with you guys too. A lot of successful people out there. And all related to sports like David Goggins. Mm -hmm. uh, who? Wait, who? David, David Goggins. Goggins. Who's that? He's a That's, Brody Kenneth It's one of, the, one of our resources. Oh, right. David Goggins yes, was yes. a guy who, long story short, he was born and raised in Brazil, in the slums of Brazil, grew up in a neighborhood where he was one of the only black people, experienced a lot of racism, Right. moved to the United States, wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Oh, wow. And he went through a lot of adversity around that, and then he quit, and he put on like 100 pounds. Wow. He was like... Just under, just under 300 pounds. Wow. Yeah. That's spraying, heavy. Spraying, spraying cockroaches. And then one day he wow. was like... He quit the Navy SEALs. He like, he didn't, pa he didn't, he had a, he had a cellular disorder that made oh. him, had to drop, forced him to drop out of, it was like six weeks into the Navy SEALs. That's horrible. Crazy. And so yeah. then he put on all this weight. Sure. And then he's spraying cockroaches. Obviously super for, depressed. Yeah. yeah. Super depressed. Right. Like, what am I doing? Then all of a sudden he just, something in his mind, he watched Rocky. He watched. Nice. It was, like, it was the fourteenth. Oh. It was the fourteenth round of Rocky. Sure, I Again, love that movie. Oh, what? It's who's the guy movie. that he fights? Uh, uh, Ivan Ivan Drago. Drago. No, no, uh, different guy. Which uh, Rocky? The first one. Isn't it? It's Drago. Is it Drago? I'm pretty sure it is. We should look this up. We should. We, we should, should look. look we so should look this up. This is important. It's the fourteenth round. Yeah. Where he gets knocked out. I'm pretty sure it's Ivan Drago. Right. So yeah. he gets knocked out, and then he gets up. Yeah. And then the look on the opponent's face, yeah. Drago's face, yeah. is that's what motivated him to, to go again. Oh, really? Because this guy, he wasn't a better fighter. Right. He just kept on getting up, and right. that and that defeat of that defeat look on the yeah. other guy's face is what drove him and switched his mind to go. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be wow. a combat combat fighter. Sure. In the for the U.S. military, so he got. He worked himself up, right? Got back into the Navy SEALs, and then did the Navy SEAL. He he's the only person to complete Navy right. SEAL Hell Week three times. Oh, and so now, as you can tell. and he's now, very passionate. Oh, clearly, this, yeah, this yeah he's, you really nuts. like this guy. This, <laughs> and this is the guy that introduced yeah. the term "callousing your mind." Right, we were talking about that before. Right, yeah. and having a malleable and calloused mind. Right. This guy's nuts. And then he what went a machine. on. And it, what a absolute machine. Absolute machine. He went from 300 pounds to holding yeah. the world record for most pull ups in 24 hours. How many pull ups? Do you so know? 3,000, something like that. 3,000? Yeah. 24 hours. 
But wow. anyways. Anyways. Yeah. That's so why. After that <laughs> rant. <laughs> so there's a lot of successful people out there like David Goggins. Yes. Yeah. J- even JFK. Sure. That they had an alter ego. Right. And this alter ego, when they put on like JFK, he had a pair of glasses. And every time he put that pair of glasses on, yeah. he was JFK. The people. Interesting. That's I didn't know that. Do you find yourself that you have an alter ego? Or do you find yourself using any accessories to help you be who you are to achieve your goals to achieve your you goals. put on a different hat when you go out to work oh to i go. hate wearing hats no <laughs> but i get your question <laughs> right um and this comes hat. That's again yeah. and again and again and really? again with a lot of people with regards to wow you know i should what? i should get an alter ego because these are <laughs> successful exactly i like, didn't know that um well i feel like you do have a little oh, you think so alter ego yeah oh that's interesting yeah why i want to expand on that why I feel like whenever you talk about business, sure. it's like, okay, I'm Kimia. Right. <laughs> and I am a founder of all these three businesses. Sure. And then outside of that, you're a different person, man. Like, you talk, think so? Really? Yeah, talking oh, that's to you so is interesting. very different with regards to not business. It, it's, is, it a, is it a it's passion all, switch? It's or almost is like... Because it, I don't it's know. Like you're, it's like you're humble. Sure. It's like completely different because you're talking to you, you're engaged. Right. It's like what we were just touched on, being right. engaged. You're willing to talk and it's light. It's right. not It's not like serious and really like, sure. right? You're able to kind of judge this conversation and then hop on the same wave of the conversation, whatever yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's very true. So do you think you have an alter ego? Apparently you do. I, did, I, I don't I, think I do. I didn't, I didn't even do? know that. You no. Know that? No. Well, I, I'm what very... What do you put on every morning? What do I wear? Yeah. I wear almost the exact same thing. I wear either black jeans... Or I wear uh, blue jeans, same pair from Old Navy. They're twenty two dollars. It's a great, great value. <laughs> and then I basically only wear black Tommy Hilfiger VNX. Yeah. That's like all I wear. Yeah. This is uh, navy blue. This is Royal navy blue. This is a navy blue, but I, it's like this is from H and M, which is also yeah. like five bucks. Um, so, yeah, I, I wear almost the exact same thing every day. Mm-hmm. When you communicate to people, do you communicate to them in a certain way? Do you have a certain mentality? Like, you yeah, get, I saw, your business. Uh, how do you communicate to your business? Is it a certain like authoritarian kind of I would, style? I would say so. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't notice any change. It's interesting that you bring that up because I feel like I'm very consistent across the board. Yeah, you think so? Oh yeah. I maybe I'm different with my girlfriend because like, you know, we're in private and we can just it, it's just a little bit different. But right. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you find yourself being humble at certain situations like you said with your girlfriend? Mm. Is Maybe. there any other I think situations? I think vulnerable more than humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm more I'm more vulnerable mm-hmm. around her and I like, you know I, I don't want to say like I have walls up when talking to other people mm-hmm. because I don't. Like I'm I'm very open you are. to mm-hmm. most every question. But I I didn't think I had Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't think I so. That's so it. interesting. Oh I believe it. No, oh, for yeah. sure. I a hundred percent when I go to work I was sure. like I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm going to sit right. here on my chair. I'm, right. I know everything. Right. If I don't know it, I'm going to figure it out. Right. I come home and it's like a whole spiritual world in my head. Interesting. <laughs> oh, really? And I just want to wow. be in nature. Sure. And then <laughs> I go to work again and I click that door and right. I go in and it's like a whole different ball game for me. <laughs> Mr. Manny. Yeah. It's like. That's hilarious. But no, I don't, I don't know. Because he has very serious jobs Sure. As well. well, you work in the military, right? Well, he has two different jobs. And what's he been? Sure. Yeah. So you, like, I would suppose you have to put on a front. Like yeah. A very professional front with yeah. both of them, especially in the, the positions that he is. He's yeah. high up there. But I would the, say I can read a room. Like, yeah. I, I know right. when to suit and tie and shake someone's hand and look them in the eye. Or, you know, put go for the bro on. hug. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Like I, yeah. Like I can. But I you can, don't think it's a necessarily an alter ego. No. No. Do you I don't think it I don't will think help so. your 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 end of wars in the future. Putting an alter ego. No, I don't think so. No. I just I, that just it feels so deliberate to it me. It does feel deliberate because it it feels like I'm trying to be someone else. Mm-hmm. And eventually, well, I I feel like you are already on that stage that you sure. know your capabilities. Yes. And you yeah. know what to do. I feel like for people out there that do not know what they're capable of, yeah, this is like a door that opens. It's, it's in their very soul true that to they can yeah. walk to in. That's a really good actually point. unlock their potential. Sure. So yeah, but I feel like 
now that we're analyzing it, yeah, you were talking about yeah. it. You, I feel like you're already at that stage of like you right. know what you're capable of. Well, yeah, and I and I also know that if I'm not capable of of it, I can become capable of it. Like if I if I know that I need, like a good example is like running a marathon. Like a lot of people train a lot of time. I'm like. Pfft. I could just run it tomorrow. It would be really hard and it would hurt a lot. Right. But like, yeah, I could probably become capable of that. Or like running, like, like I could probably teach myself how to code, right? Yeah. I have I have a very, you know, and this is, this is I think, something that comes back to um, internal superpowers. So if you think about what makes people valuable kind of by yourself, mm-hmm. everyone has their own unique superpowers. Yeah, and yeah I, think, I, I totally agree. I think agree. two of mine specifically – is I work harder than 99% of the people I know. Um, and the other one is I just have like supreme self-belief. I know I will figure it out. Given enough time and energy and effort, I know I can figure it out. And I'm probably, you know, coupled with hard work, I think that is extremely rare and yeah, extremely, extremely valuable. Powerful. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, I, I'm probably already there. But it, I, you know, my my girlfriend was asking me, she... She said, you, you seem so introspective. And I was like, that's really interesting. And so I thought about that. And I think probably between 23 and 24 is when I really started just reflecting a lot more internally and just kind of thinking through how other people think about things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then thinking through how I think about things. Mm-hmm. Right. Because we're, we're, all, we're all trying to figure our own things out. And mm-hmm. I think that's a, that age a lot of people start to do mm-hmm. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think if you don't, you're missing a lot. You are because it's it's very valuable. Mm-hmm. So I got to go backwards a little bit because you were talking about making your list and adding yes. like, your daily tools. What do you have a do you have a daily book? Like, please yeah. tell us like how do you organize your day? Sure. So uh, I use an app called Workflowy. Workflow. I really like it. It's really nice. great. It's because it's, personally, I'm yeah. I'm trying to find like sure. I'm playing around with different use apps. Workflowy. It's great, yeah. and I've you probably rec- used it? every project management software under the sun. Yeah, it's fantastic. Basically, what it is is it's a bullet point checklist. Yeah. But it works on an indent system. So if you have your main task, excuse me, if you have if your main task and then you press tap tab, it'll make a task under that task as like a subtask, right? And then so you can have cascading tasks so you can understand and work backwards towards your, your main goal. Your so, goal, yeah. Right. Exactly, yeah. So my, my day sort of looks like the following. I'll wake up, I'll either read some articles or I'll check my email. Usually my emails are articles, like, I'll, like New York Times yeah. uh, email newsletters, that kind of stuff. So coffee, I drink an absurd amount of coffee. It is concerning. <laughs> and everyone around me has said, you need to slow down. So yeah. I, pr- I probably do. Uh, as I'm looking at yeah, your yeah. extra large <laughs> It's a large. It's not an extra large. Oh, okay, it's a large. Okay. But it's... It but it's, it's an extra yeah, large. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. An extra large will go cold. I can't drink it fast enough, right. so I get a large. Yeah. And what number of coffee is that today? That is the third <laughs> large. Yeah. But anyways. Anyways. anyways so, so, I, so, I, right, so I have right, my right. yeah exactly. That's a that's a problem for another time. Right. So I have I have my coffee in the morning, and then um, and then I will check my email and then I'll, I'll start work. And so what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll look at everything that I finished yesterday, and then I'll start a new to do item, and then I'll either move anything from yesterday's onto today, delete any of the stuff that I don't think is really important. And then make my one, two, three, like I was talking about earlier, like the Prior, top three prioritize. things. Prioritize. Exactly. The top three things I want to get done. I'll check my schedule and then I'll add a gym session to that, right? And so I'll, I'll schedule it in. So it's usually on my lunchtime. And then I just work through my to-do list. And this is I just get to it. all in an app. Workflowy. Yeah, Absolutely. it's great. And I don't work that for them, very, I promise. That sounds very, <laughs> that sounds very efficient, too. Yeah, it, it is good. And a lot yeah. of people, this is a huge advantage. If you yeah. are a busy person yeah. organizing your life and scheduling, like you said, a yeah. gym time in there. Yeah. It just helps your mind. Oh, absolutely. Open absolutely. up. Yeah. And it is essential to schedule it in there. It, it, it really is. Uh, there was this really great article. Forget. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. for sure. There was a really great article I read by Mark Andreessen. And he was saying... Um, he has like rules of productivity and he has an anti to-do list and a to-do list. And so all the things that you don't want to do and then all the things that you're actually trying to get done, yeah. he does the same format that I do. Well, I do the same format that he does cause I learned it from him. Um, but I think he has five things and I only have three things cause mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think I can get five things done 
it's more efficient for me to do the three and like really try and focus on those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, you can go through a very deep productivity hole, but I think the core is get out of somewhere where you're not used to. So like coffee shops are really productive for me. I get a lot of work done at coffee shops. Really? I've never tried it. You I've never tried really? it. Really? Yeah. I have that same you, thing. I you, feel so no. distracted in coffee shops. Really? There's so much stuff in wow. there. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm the complete opposite. I'm the, I'm the, yeah. I'm the same as you, Kimia. Exactly. I get, I'm productive. Yeah. Just change the scenery. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's a change. I think it's a change of scenery. I don't know why, but I get a lot. I think it's the intent of going somewhere to work. I right. think that's it. Right. It must be. Uh, even though, like, I have a dedicated, I have a dedicated desk in my office, <laughs> for like a nice desk. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I get a lot of a lot of work done at coffee shops, um, and then yeah, just just being deliberate about it. I think I think having an absolute goal is really important. Yeah. When do you think that switch was of like, okay, I need to do things? Was it in <laughs> high school? I need to do something with Come myself. On, man. He was out of the womb. <laughs> we already, we already yeah. know this. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that. Bro. I wrote my to-do list <laughs> yeah, yeah. at age zero. He came out yeah. with word flowy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> word flowy. I think, yeah. Brought to you by word flowy. Is there any yeah. moment in your, your life day. when you said, okay, I need to put on my... That epiphany. My big boy The, light, my the light bulb yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. I need to Come actually on. learn this. Le- like learn how to be productive learn how to be yourself oh i'm always trying to improve um i don't think there was a light bulb moment you don't need i to- think in retrospect it's easy to look back and be like wow i'm so i i'm trying to improve and i'm reading and i'm doing all these great things yeah. but i think uh probably i would probably say you know two two to three years ago two to three years maybe ago. Yeah. yeah i think the time where i really started to take some time and reflect and just think about how other people think yeah. was really valuable to me. So you think reflection was your main source of change? Change. Maybe. Yeah. It's hard to say. I haven't I haven't reflected on why I've reflected. <laughs> which I think I which I think I need to do. I think that's that's an interesting exercise. But yeah, I it's it's in, it's a really good question. And I, that's probably when I, cause I'm 25 right now. Right. Yeah. But I also feel a lot older. Like I like Age mentally is just a number, man. I know, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like I'm 30. And the other thing is like, now that I've started shaving my head, a lot of people think I'm a lot older. Like they put me around 30, which is fine. Like I honestly don't care, <laughs> but it helps. Yeah. It helps on video sales calls. I think that works <laughs> right. really well. Yeah. Um, probably when I, probably a year into ghost it was really when I, started to solidify like okay you have actual responsibilities you are paying people you need to create something of value you really need to focus there's real consequences on the line yeah Mm -hmm. that is very interesting i i would have i would have assumed that you would say your changing point was way before like yeah someone else someone else said that like in childhood you know like yeah even before high school because yours was yeah Mm-hmm. Well, talk talk to me about that. That's interesting. Well, there's a lot. Like after after attempting to go to the Olympics in sure. 2012, I for came sailing. Back, yeah, yeah. I came back and I was so deflated. Right. And then I went to university. Yeah. To Uvic, and then I met Hope, <laughs> and, and there you was found a, hope. I found hope. <laughs> yeah. Ding. And I'm then, sure you've never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. And then there was it's a guy. So good. There was a guy who I lived with who lived on top of me. And at night, I would just hear him typing on oh, his computer. And he yeah. was an engineer. He was right. a project lead of, oh, wow. of a club. And I was like, you know what? I am wasting my time. Yeah. <laughs> I need to switch like right now. I need really? to be someone. I need to really catch the rain on and right. try to do something with myself. The project that i had in hand was school at that moment mm-hmm. and then from there it moved on to another thing and then it just gonna keep moving and moving and moving and i'm gonna try to complete as many projects as my life as possible mm-hmm. do you feel the same way yeah i do now i oh i was always ambitious and driven and trying to do things and i don't i don't think my problem was i never tried i didn't try hard enough yeah because i always tried i always yeah. tried super hard i think I think part of when I started, yeah, I would say it was later than people assume because I, I am very confident outwardly yeah. and inwardly. I'm just a confident person. Like I think I can figure it out. And so 
I think being, because no one's really sure what's going to happen. You just have like very strong values and you abide by them. And that's, that's a really good way to operate. And so you're preparing yourself for what yeah, it is to come. Maybe you, solidifying my values really helped. And I think that your values came from childhood. Hearing I this would whole agree. conversation, I would agree. your parents really put that. Yeah. In oh, yeah. Head. Yeah. My, my parents gave me the best childhood anyone could have ever asked for. Like you like had 40 acres. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah. No, it, it was great. Um, but it was, and it was a very kind of open environment. Open environment, yeah. And so uh, I, I was never, I was never really told. I wasn't told no, but I mean, there were obvious boundaries and like, you have to do your work and you have to work hard and stuff. Like, I mean, I was given a chainsaw for my 12th birthday and they're like, go have fun, go cut down some trees. We need you to do some work. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And I mean, they, they did have that trust in me. Yeah. Um, I also think that was a ploy to get my dad to get me to do work. And he was like, you yeah. need you to chop Here's this some fun toy. Exactly. Go yeah. have fun. Yeah. Be safe. Exactly. <laughs> um, it was electric, so I couldn't just take it everywhere. Right. Yeah. It was cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, it's interesting to think about for sure. Yeah. But my values definitely come from childhood, but I think I've really started to just cement them maybe over the last two years. And there are, there are some things that I can't say publicly, but I will tell you privately, so fun for the listeners. There are things that I have been thinking about that have been bothering me lately about my personal life that I need to make a change around. And, and consciously I, you know what you're Yeah, need exactly, to exactly, exactly. And I and it really really bothers me. And so being like very sure about the steps that I need to take around that is also another factor in proving that my values are solidifying. Yeah. That's really important because I think some people have that same feeling, mm -hmm. but continue on. Oh yes, with that absolutely. same feeling, yeah. and just and bring it with them and yeah. think it's going to subside. Yep. But it doesn't, and it probably if it's present now, it probably won't no, subside it, exactly. unless you come up with a solution, actively yeah. come up with a solution for it. I think so too. And that's smart that you yeah. reflected on it, realize yeah. it that this is has a strain on you and you need to, you're searching for change and you need to act on it yeah. now. I, I'm curious, now that I, I remembered what I was yeah. thinking yeah. when I was asking that question of you, you said that you were your 20 year old self that you would advise not to be an asshole. Yes, that's true. <laughs> when do you realize this? I would, I would, again, my answer would be probably like, Two to three years ago. Yeah? Yeah. You would just say, wow, why did I do that? I think so. I think, you know what I think it was? I think some people were telling me stories about how I used to be. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's so horrible. Like, why? <laughs> why? Like a perfect example, um, Rachel Gordon, one of my like absolute great friends. I know her. Uh, yep. Yeah. She's in London right now um, doing speech pathology. When I was like fairly young like 16 maybe 17 yeah. she was coming over and she was drinking a slushy and I was like obsessed with fitness obsessed I still am but like I would eat spinach and tofu for lunch and I was like super ripped and all I would do is work out and, I, and she was at the door she was like hey like really happy to see me I'm like you can't bring that in here like you either have to and she like just bought it I'm like you either have to drink it now or throw it out to come in I'm like think I'm reflecting on like oh my god that's why? so like why? why would I, it's like and it's not like I'm gonna drink it, you know. She's allowed to drink it in the house. Like what a dick move. Yeah. So I there's stories like that. Did you ever apologize? Oh, profusely now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she gets it. She knows. That brings me to a thing by you. Sure. Yeah. Like, but I I just I, I think about that. I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear that. It's shitty. <laughs> and then I and now I'm, I think I'm much more selective. Yeah. About what I say. Yeah. I feel like I need to take this off my chest, Kimia. Sure. Like you said, you look back and you're like, oh, what an asshole. Yeah. I think I did an asshole move. Okay. <laughs> when I was in, <laughs> when we were in high school. <laughs> what, to me? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't so, remember. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. When he told me this, I'm I ready. went, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I'm ready. So back in high school, Kimia, you obviously... Like nice things. Yes. Didn't you? Yeah. Well, all your life, yeah, right? Yeah. Did you hit my door? <laughs> you did. How the you? fuck did you know? No. But I didn't do it on purpose. I was a Brody in the parking lot. 
You did. You hit my Mini Cooper. And we were backing up. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. And it's me, too. Oh, I didn't, okay. I didn't okay. tell you, too. But we, it's okay. it was, we paid, talked about it. We I, on it I like, paid my $300 deductible. I was oh. not happy at the time. I know. I can pay yeah, you the yeah, 300 bucks no, no, if you no, want. No, <laughs> no way. I just needed to take yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, we... Brody was fucking Dude, around in the car, hilarious. and I backed up, yeah. and I hit you, and I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, and this is Kimi's car. Right now. And it was yeah. the nicest car in the it parking was, lot. It, it was like an 05 Mini Cooper. But anyways, like, I had like a fucking... Nice. You had a minivan. Yeah. Minivan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, your car was bad. And then it was I, not as nice. Yeah, exactly. It was an $800 yeah, minivan yeah, 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 off yeah. the Eastern So then I started like... That's hilarious. Knowing that you <laughs> asked a bunch of people, like, who did it? Yeah, I did. I did. I totally did. I, I was like, going to tell you, but yeah. then you you were so aggressive about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh, you were like, who the fuck yeah. was it? And I was like, I'm not going to yeah. tell no, you. No, I don't. And I don't fall He's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's a don't trust I'm it. sorry. No <laughs> worries. I had you many Hilarious. Cooper. So, yeah, now you know. You know. You, know. you know what? You know what's funny? Now you know. Tell us that driving, story. I was driving by Oak Bay. Yeah. And then Annie had to turn around. She was in the parking lot. I was like, someone hit me in this parking lot. Like, I was telling her. It was that long. <laughs> unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. Now you can release you can, it on you your can, chest. Yeah, you can take me for tacos. I can take you I like for tacos. Like I'll we, make we, you a we meal. We talked. Yeah, thank you. While we were yeah, planning. Yeah. That's how we were planning the though. podcast and going through our schedule yeah. for the podcast. And that's I, so funny. And I brought up, well, we yeah. need to have Kimi yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah. And it was after seeing you at the gym. Yeah. And then we talked about it. And like, we started making we're gonna bring it up. We're going to bring it up on the on the podcast. Well, I appreciate Hope and I, Hope and I will, will make you a nice quinoa pizza. Thank you. Because I know you. pizza? Yeah, we'll make the best quinoa great. pizza wow. ever. We'll that make it excellent. for you. Honestly, we'll you set up the whole it. place. <laughs> that sounds too. excellent. For you and your girlfriend. Fair, we'll, fair. We'll have you. It will be my apology. Thank you. That's so crazy. That so good. That's Getting it off my chest. Wow, you should have told me earlier. Like, I... I, can't, I stopped caring like three months after. I yeah. like, this sucks, but like, eh, there are worse <laughs> things. I mean, if you like totaled my car, oh, I'd be oh, pissed. Yeah, no, that yeah. car did get totaled. I forget. Sadly. Was it oh, bad? Fuck. Was it, it was the, totaled. Was it? it was dead. So no, the, but the, the, his, his fuck. Oh, up. no, it was like a scratch. Okay. Like, it was, yeah. I, but it was a the day. Yeah. Yeah. Back in high school, yeah, it was like, like I had a to get a painted. Thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I had to, I had to get the door painted, and it was like, I paid my deductible. And like, that was lame. But like, that's so funny. <laughs> I can't believe it was you. That's Anyways, crazy. I oh know. I hope you're a better driver now. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah I hope so. Well, I don't drive with Brody. That's why he was fucking... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm going to blame it on Brody. Oh, I'm going to blame it on Brody. It's always like, hey, man. Yeah. You were oh, excited for a second Oh, my God. That was, a, to be fair, that was a really tight parking lot, too. It was, it was a really, tight, it was a really small it was parking lot. Oh, yeah. But anyways, now that... That's amazing. Yeah, well, I'm glad you feel better. Now I feel... Horrible. No, I'm <laughs> You're gonna no, feel great. good with that quinoa pizza. I will. I'm pumped. I'm definitely pumped. Bro, that's you got hilarious. anything? I don't have anything off the top of my head. Nothing that was the no. last question. Man. That was. No. That was. Yeah, we were gonna round. Do you it have up anything for us? Yeah. Well, I'll be. Please. I, well, I know, like, we've never done this. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is well, this is our second guest. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. But I think yeah. it's something that we sh- we want to add to our totally yeah to our totally, podcast. Say, totally. hey, do you have any questions for us? Rapid because fire Because here questions. we are. Oh, rapid fire. You want rapid fire no, questions? No, no rapid fire. I'm not no. good at those. Cause sure. I'm, so one of the. English one is of my the, second language. Well, also, <laughs> <laughs> your English is very good. Um, I host my own podcast, so I'm, I'm, I would like to believe I'm good at asking questions. Both of you play sports at an extremely high level. You tried to go to the Olympics for yeah. sailing. You were a pro soccer player and going pro again. So that's obviously like an insane amount of mental fortitude. But I am specifically curious to ask... What happened with the sailing Olympics? Like, what, yeah. what, how did you not get in? And what did you do mm-hmm. immediately after? So, with the Olympics, there's... If you want to go with the Olympics for sailing, there's seven competitions mm-hmm. that you have to go. Like seven races? Seven races yeah. around the world. And I attempted three. <clears throat> right. And I didn't place in the position that you needed to, to place. Right. So... People, there's like 300 people who go and they separate you in fleets, so sure. 50 or 60. Wow. And then you start, you race, and then after the event, you place and top 51 countries get to go to the wow. Olympics. Okay. Right? So I was competing for Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> this was in the, in the 11th grade, so I was in oh, grade wow. 11. So I was very young. That sure. possibly could have been. One of the reasons my mental strength was not there. Right. Because I was in grade 11. Right. 
And when I went, it was just a whole new environment for me. It was right. all this top elite athletes. And I wow. was this Mexican sailor <laughs> who, who had the heart. Sure. And I was, I was fit. Right. But were they not fit? They were, they were su- everyone was super fit. Sure. But when you start sailing, it's not all about your fitness. True. It's all about your tactics. Yeah. It's all about how you start. Right. How you view where everyone is. It's very tactical. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the tactical game behind, behind right. my, my sailing capabilities. So after three competitions, I was in 111th Okay. place or something like that for mexico or overall overall okay so and top 51 go yeah top okay. 51 countries go and i was in the 111th wow country so yeah. and it was uh i was far back and i was like sure. i want to i want to keep going but the money was just not there is it really expensive it's so expensive you have to wow. pay for charters of the boat oh, the wow. registration for the event right. and you have to pay sometimes your flights me- the mexican government me a flight to france sure and that was it wow. so that's expensive it was yeah. a lot of support with the guys to what mexico could do sure but i needed more of course and yeah i was young and then after that when i came to high school i was like my mom didn't push me sure to do it because yeah. the money was just not there yeah it was not there right so any top elite athletes out there Look, if you are truly passionate about what you are trying to do, mm-hmm. try to look for sponsors. Mm-hmm. Try to do like Brody's doing bottle drives. He's putting a GoFundMe page. Yeah. I didn't do that. And I feel like it's also high school. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. was distracted by all this other right. high school things sure. like girlfriends right. and Just life was coming out. Life and yeah. partying and all that. Right. I wasn't there yet. Right. If I didn't, when I was in university, when I made right. the switch, it would have been a completely different story. But at that point in my life, I had hope and I had different mentality. I right. want a family. Right. So that's what happened. And maybe in the future, Hope and I try. I don't sure. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Should I go to the Olympics? I don't know. Wow. But um, be, yeah. Phys- physically wise, I like pushing my body to the limit. Mm-hmm. Like I ran a 10K this morning. Right. Yeah. Then, at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Do you run with music or just nothing? Oh, I run with music, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not the music that I listen to. Sure. It's just a, an isolation noise. Yeah. It's like a mantra, like you said. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You listen to the yeah. same song every single time. Yeah. I listen to music to just get in my head. Right. And right. once... Very I'm, similar, yeah. Once I am in my head, I can analyze everything that I'm doing. Every mm-hmm. step, every breath, mm-hmm. everything that I am... And do you know it's 10K? No. I, or do you just use one? I, I came like, home okay. and I calculated right, it. Okay, it yeah. was 10K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I ran out of time because I needed sure. to do a lot of diving and right, like right. knowledge reviews and stuff like yeah. that. No, for sure. And then it, I, I don't know. I just feel like humans are way too comfortable. Mm-hmm. Way too comfortable. I agree. And yeah. you need to push yourself yeah. in an uncomfortable state yeah. in order to see how far you can go. Like yourself, you put yourself in an uncomfortable state probably every single day. I try. I you try. try. There are days where I don't. And I reflect and I'm like, that was not good. I like sure. this quote. I don't know where it's from, but yeah. it's being learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. I've heard, I've heard that as well. I don't I know also, where it comes from. It's from Abraham Lincoln. Is Michael it? Scott. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not? <laughs> it's just, I, just, <laughs> yes. I, I was like, like, so no, convincing. No, no. no, I say that <laughs> because, uh, do you not watch The Office? That's an office reference. So every quote on the internet is from Abraham Lincoln. And then if you watch The Office, Michael Scott is like, it's like you miss, (laughs) this is a bit where he's like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Abraham Lincoln, Michael Scott. (laughs) So (laughs) wrong. But my, so my question to you, Brody, is you are now trying to become a professional athlete. Right. Uh, What is the driving force behind that? It's interesting. It changed. Because you were a professional athlete. Well, I was... Oh, Semi pro. That was it's so close. Right. I never made money. Sure. But I was in, I was with a professional club. Right. And I was trying to find a contract. Right. And I signed a contract. So I went there. I was with the club for a month and a half. I went to twice. First time I went there was with a club that ended up going bankrupt. So the club went bankrupt and very unfortunate. Very unfortunate and very common 
in the country that I went to. I was in Thailand. Right. right. And then I went back again for a second trip. And this time was a little more calculated and I had better teams set up through representatives and network that I made during my first trip. So I went and worked hard and prepared myself. And then I was with a club called Rayong United for a month and a half. And I was there with my girlfriend coming in and out. And there was a What about, dedication. That's impressive for her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, not girlfriend at the time. Sure. But we were just oh, wow. like, we felt something. We're like, we're not, like, we're not giving this up because yeah. whatever it is, like, this is. Hold on to it. This is it. Yeah. Like, don't leave, right? Yeah. And so during that time, there was 15 other international players that came to try out during my time there that got turned away. But right. they kept me. Wow. It was wild. And then they said, okay, we want to sign you. And then they gave me our my terms, comfortable. And then. I signed my four copies of the contract, and when I signed, it was with the administrative manager of the club. It wasn't with the president who finalizes the contract, right? Because there was only a week or two left in the FIFA signing window. Okay. So they needed the administration administrative progress to start. So I started it, signed signed the paper, handed all four copies of the contract over. Thought I was a professional athlete. Right. Five days later, she comes back, says, "I'm sorry." But they didn't finalize your contract wow. on Christmas Day. Oh. I'm not. I'm not religious, but it's sure. Christmas, right? Like sure. it's yeah. It's, like it's, consumer, it's a yeah. consumerism Christmas, right? <clears throat> sure. And so it's like, wow. Like, oh, oh, okay. So how do I respond? So I was spent two more months in Thailand training with players that were kind of in the same situation that that I was in, right. looking for other clubs, but in different countries. And so I tried to get into that network, but then those guys were fishy, so I just came home. Sure. Uh, so what was the what was the question? So now, again? now you're trying to be so, a professional athlete. Again. Right. So now oh, that, the backstory is important. So so, so now. Yeah. And so this, why you ask me why? Yeah. Why what and you, why now specifically? So okay. So before when I was younger, my reasoning for becoming a professional athlete or soccer player was for the title sure for the image right. because it was there's the it was the era of the social media sure. i wanted to look like that right. i wanted people to perceive me as that right and then when i went to thailand and after going to thailand and through my experience playing with people in thailand and seeing just how they approach the sport changed the way i approach the game right. i would i play the game to derive as much positive experiences and connections that I can from the game while I play at the highest capacity that I can play at, as well as I'm type one diabetic. Mm -hmm. I wanna be a role model for people that have diabetes that wanna become a professional athlete. It's mm -hmm. possible, you just sure. have to be so dedicated, right. so precise with your eating, your right. insulin intake. Are there other professional Every athletes? Yeah, there are. Right. So soccer players sure. as well so it's yeah. possible right it is possible so then it's so that was just kind of my why changed right and it and i believed in my why more mm -hmm. than i did before and i think now that i have this strong belief in my why even more so i think this next time i'm approaching a trial in july mm -hmm. i i believe i will be more successful because i believe in why i'm doing it more right. more well, you have an in, you have a much stronger internal driver, <clears throat> and that is much much stronger, and that is super powerful. And Absolutely. it changed, and I noticed it changed. I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa. right? And and, that's... I, and I forgot a, forgot about the social media. Right. Stop trying to stop. Well, I, You're I still doing like it for other people, right? You're doing and it for I, yourself. like I still achieve, but I'm not like pushing out my small achievements, putting on my training totally. thing, yeah. what I'm doing. I'm just working my ass off behind the scenes. Yeah being as humble and direct and honest mm -hmm. with what I'm doing in pursuit of accomplishing, not a dream, because I think dream, it is a dream. Yes, it is a dream. However, it's a goal. Because I think dream, it's, it's a mission. I was just about to say it's your mission. It's my mission because dreaming is more just like fantasizing. Sure. Fantasizing, right? But this is a mission, is a goal. It's more, a, right. that is more concrete. It's more achievable sure. than a dream. Yeah. And I think that for people who are doing sports um, in a top level, that is what you need to find. You mm -hmm. need to find an intrinsic motivator, finding in finding anything. finding your why in anything, mm -hmm. in business, in engineering, and everything. Find your intrinsic motivator, 
and really take a step back and dig into it. It has to be powerful enough to keep you going at the toughest times. And I didn't have that when I went and yeah. tried out. Yeah. And I feel like you do, Brody. And working hard every single day is Are you, are you training key. soccer daily? Wow. Impressive. Try to get a thousand yeah. touches every day. Wow. A thousand touches every That's day. Great. There you have it. And I'm going to go to the Y after this to, to go. Nice. Yeah. And you train your mind by having Just conversations, having flowing, conversations, networking, yeah. Absolutely. reading, reading Absolutely. a lot. Yeah. People read. And Please listening read. to you podcasts. Need to read. You need, need to read. And listening to this podcast. Yeah. This Specifically. Podcast. This podcast. So Which Kimia? podcast? This podcast. <laughs> It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. This was a blast. This it was, was awesome. I, I've, I've, I've learned so much from you that I haven't known. Right. Yeah, I, had, well, I learned I had some this... things about you. you... <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, you no, are... I've, I've learned a lot about you. This well, was, we, this was well really we came up with this idea of doing this pot. Well, when, when Manuel approached me with this sure. idea, idea, you were the first person that came to my mind as a I've guest speaker. That, that you think so, yeah. That's great. Yeah. 100%. Because you're in our community... You're someone that we know, mm -hmm. and you're someone that we can relate to, and I think that a lot of people can learn from you. We learn. Yeah. We, well, I appreciate yeah, you saying yeah, that. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a blast, and you know, if uh, if this has helped anyone at all, this it will be very very valuable to me. Exactly. So and I think if that's you fantastic. and if you have a business out there, you want to promote it, contact him yet. <laughs> I mean, this is far less of a of a salesy podcast. Oh, but, oh of course. But yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, definitely. Uh, yeah. I mean, even if you have questions. Just and if you have questions, email. if you want to learn about anything in specific, please shoot us an email. We're in iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, adventuringforknowledge.com, and we will look for a person to gain you the knowledge that you seek. And if you have questions for Kimia, you can also... Shoot me an email. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes, Fantastic. exactly. Perfect. Any closing remarks, Mr. Kenya? Any tips, any no, comments just, from the great I think one? This was very, the... very in depth. I think this was fantastic. Yeah. No, this was right great. On. So stay fresh and callous your mind. Callous your mind. Meditate. Find your why. Find your why. Smile. 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 For fuck's sake, smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very I have a very angry resting face. Do you? Oh yeah. Bitch oh, face? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what hope. Yeah. <laughs> that's what she said about me no that's what Hope oh. says, says about herself a, a, about oh, really? a lot of people yeah, yeah. she's I do. like I do. oh that person has a yeah. <laughs> resting bitch face yeah and she's like I, do I have a resting yeah. bitch face but anyways a, a lot of love to everyone out there and seek knowledge anywhere you can especially in nature <laughs> <laughs> and please remember to be active in your community Brody, come on. Remember, remember keep smile. going, keep going. Remember, remember, remember to smile. Remember to be kind and respect yourself, others, animals, and a beautiful planet. And please, never stop adventuring for knowledge. Until next time. Peace.